So, Injustice. Great fighting game. Uh, and tends to be Neverrealm's uh, break from Mortal Kombat. It, you know, in between each game they do uh, Injustice, then they do Mortal Kombat, then they do Injustice again to sort of uh, ease off uh, from fatigue of Mortal Kombat, both for us and for them. Um, and I've really enjoyed it. As far as fighting games go, Marvel characters are probably more synonymous with fighting games on the basis of Capcom's Versus series. So when Neverrealm came along and said, look, we can do this with um, with DC characters, and they tried that Mortal Kombat DC sort of mix and it didn't really work, but when they finally said, yeah, okay, this is, that's not gonna work, but if we could just do them on their own, um, we, we can make a decent um, DC superhero game. And I think they have, it's really enjoyable and it's uh, different enough to, from Mortal Kombat to, to be enjoyable. I'm, I'm pretty sure there'll be an Injustice 3 coming very, very shortly. Um, so that brings around the conversation of guest characters, does it not? What are they going to do next? So I have chosen six characters that I'd like to see in Injustice 3 uh, for guest DLC. Sort of gone on what I think is probably more likely or would be quite pretty cool from my personal perspective. Um, let's see what you think. Let's check them out. So number six would be Judge Dredd. Um, maybe an obvious pick? I don't know, really. Um, you could argue that he, might, Judge Dredd might be better suited for Mortal Kombat, but like I said, if you're going for Injustice and it's about comic book characters, Judge Dredd is, is, is probably one of the most popular non-DC or Marvel uh, comic book characters ever. You know, maybe next to Spawn. I know they put Spawn in Mortal Kombat. Again, I was quite surprised with that because I thought Spawn would have been in Injustice. But I guess they wanted to have a bit more fun with Spawn with, with his natural powers and ripping skin off and that kind of stuff. Whereas Judge Dredd, um, you, you could do one or, or t'other. You, you know, you could put him in uh, Injustice or Mortal Kombat and he'd work quite well. Um, I don't know too much about Judge Dredd except for what I've seen in the, the biggest media he's appeared in. Um, but that, that's the point. Stick him in Injustice 3, give me a chance to sort of know a bit more about his lore and where he came from and who knows I might pick up a few comic books and sort of get into the series um, especially if it sort of recommended where I could start because that's my biggest problem with comic books is where do you start yes he will be very gun orientated and I think Neverrealm are beginning to struggle with all the picks they choose is going to be projectile type characters and some of the people are getting a bit annoyed the players are getting annoyed about that but they are also finding some interesting ways to make their characters defend and dodge around projectiles now. Um, you know, just ducking under fireballs and moving forward and that kind of stuff. And Injustice especially, um, if they just get that forward roll, uh, invincible forward roll correct, then projectile characters wouldn't be as bad. However, I will admit, and probably why he's one of the lowest uh, on this list, is if they get it wrong, we could have another dead shot or Deathstroke on our hands, uh, and we really don't want that. Number five is Lionel from Thundercats. Yeah, he's more of a, a a TV show kind of character where he first started, but nowadays, if you want your kind of Thundercats fix, there's a lot of comics out there, um, and he's got a lot of exposure, and probably some of his best stuff he's ever done is in comic books. Um, you could also put He-Man in here, but I always thought Thundercats was cooler. Um, you know, he's a sword wielder. I think the claw would be pretty cool to sort of grapple hook um, a across the ceiling. I think he's different enough to to sort of warrant a place. So I, I think it would be really cool just to see what they do with his armor. What they actually, you know, when you change all the armor and the options of what you unlock. All the stuff that you could potentially put on Lionel to make him look more modernized. Um, I think that's what... Neverrealm Studios do really well is take a character that, you know, things they do with Aquaman makes him more of sort of appealing to nowadays standards or bring him into the modern age and I think Lionel would really benefit from that as well. Um, I know they've changed, tried it in some of his comics and stuff but I think Neverrealm with their kind of style would do Lionel justice and, and I think it would work, work really well for him. Um, I don't know, I'd, I'd get a kick out of him with the sword up to his eyes and one of his cutscene finishing moves or maybe in his winning pose. You know, just, just a little bit of nostalgia fun there. What's the point, right? Number four is The Mask. It's, uh, people still don't know this, but The Mask didn't actually start as a movie. The, the original Mask was actually a comic book, a very violent comic book, um, as a matter of fact. 
Uh, it wasn't until Jim Carrey's uh, movie where he became more modern and, and blown up in pop culture and that kind of stuff. But yeah, he started as a comic book. Um, not hero, maybe an anti-hero is probably closer. Um, so it, again, it fits the Injustice kind of comic book character style. Very much a wild card um, with the wacky and zany um, kind of antics you get up to. You'd be able to take what Joker does but turn it up even more because he's la literally a living cartoon. So you could just have a lot of fun with that. Uh, there's something about the mask where you can do all these zany things that would look out of place with any other character in this kind of comic book style. You know, the the, the um, explosions and the, and the falling off a cliff and hitting a brick, brick wall and going all flat and leaving an outcut of yourself. But the mask, because of what he is and how he puts that you know, when he puts the mask on, he gets all these powers. It just fits. And I think in Injustice, it would be a really interesting wild card in all of the, the story and the seriousness that Injustice is to have this kind of crazy over the top character. No regards for reality or the rules of law and just, just completely um, mess up everybody. It's just, it, yeah, I just think he'll be different enough and uh, cartoony enough to, to really get a lot of fans. Um, and what else do you put the mask in these days? If Jim Carrey's not going to put the mask on and no one else is, is uh, zany enough to be able to pull it off, chuck him in Injustice. Um, and I think that would be a, a perfect place for him and his fans to sort of come into the, into the franchise and go, yep, it's about time we had more masks and this would really work. Number three is Goku from Dragon Ball Z. <sighs> when it comes to Goku, he would look a bit weird. I have to admit, they have to they have to take some liberties on the way he would look to make it work. But God, would I wouldn't would love to have Goku versus Superman in a video game, wouldn't you? Just just to, just to answer all those arguments that people have about who would win between the two, putting Goku in Injustice so you can have Goku versus Superman battles in real life would be brilliant, and he fits the kind of world. Where, you know, I know a lot of people in Smash Brothers want to see him, but I feel he's, he's just o too OP, um, and you wouldn't be able to do that character justice. Not to mention the fact he's, he's anime, not video games, and that's what Smash Brothers is about. But he's even if that wasn't the case, he's just too OP to put in a world like Smash Brothers. I mean, he can fly, he can do massive fireballs, um, he can turn Super Saiyan, and all that kind of stuff. And if you, if you put that in the game, you kind of have to dial back to make him fit um, the world of Smash Brothers, so you upset people who goes, well, that, I can't do this, I can't do that. Uh, why has Goku not got this move? Why has Goku not got that move? Or you do too much, and he and he completely breaks the game because he's flying about all over the place. He's doing these special power moves that fill the whole screen. You know, it's a bit a bit wacky. However, in Injustice, it works. He can have his fireballs. He can have the teleport moves. He can have. Um, you know, stupid over-the-top combos and things that destroy the planet and change into all these different forms. It would work better. It would just look a bit, a bit funky with his anime-looking face. But uh, yeah, I just, I think if you're gonna choose a fighting game outside of the world of Dragon Ball Z to have Goku as a guest character, I think Injustice is probably a better fit than something like Smash Brothers, my opinion. But yeah, I, I, I'd love to see Goku versus Superman. I would, um, I'd love to see all of his over-the-top anime moves work in the world of Injustice because I just think, you know, bouncing him off the walls and all that kind of stuff, it just fits his uh, the Dragon Ball Z world completely. Number two is Lord Draken from Power Rangers. Now, Lord Draken is an interesting character for people who don't know, where for for Power Ranger fans um, or anybody who knows anything about Power Rangers when they grew up. Uh, Tommy Oliver, the Green Ranger in, in Power Rangers, was a bad guy who turned good. And then he became the White Ranger. Well, Lord Draken is a, a, a side story or a parallel universe where he didn't turn good, and instead he took the power of the White Ranger and the Green Ranger and mixed them together and became his own sort of dark overlord called Lord Draken. Um, and he enslaved everybody and he killed Power Rangers and stole their powers and uh, basically became like this evil god Power Ranger. Which is dead cool by the way. Lord Draken has never been outside of the world of comic books when it comes to Power Rangers. He's never been in the TV show. He was completely made up by the people who make the comic books of Power Rangers. Whereas Power Rangers is, is uh, a Japanese show 
where they take the footage for a different show, they bring it over to the Western audiences, and they redub it, and they put our own actors over it and sort of make a show by cutting up all this 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 old footage from a Japanese show. So Lord Dracken's never existed within that show, so that's why we've never had him on TV, and chances are we never will, because that would mean that they would have to either film their own scenes with Lord Dracken with the other Power Rangers, or the, the Japanese would have to make Lord Draken in their show and make him fit so we could use him in, in the Western show, which, you know, complicated. So he's appeared in the Power Rangers video games, and he'll always be outside the media, but he's such a cool character, this evil Power Ranger sort of powered up to the max. But because he's been in comics, and that's his main forte, again, Injustice it would be a great opportunity for him to again, have that restraint lifted off him, Put him into a world where you can actually explore the character more in this kind of new media, um, and you know you can bring in the the Megazord, the Dragon Zord and stuff that he would use uh, for his special moves. Um, you know, he could, again, he's, he's very much a teleporting kind of character, very quick, uh, using daggers. Um, and, it, it, and it would be pretty cool to see someone like Batman punch him across the chest and see those sparks fly off. You know, his armour like they did in Power Rangers and bits and pieces like that. So yeah, I just I think Lord Draken, because he was based in comic books, would make a great character into this. It would expand that character more, give him more breathing space, allow him to uh, be explored more, because I never feel that it would ever be something they could potentially do in real life unless they did a movie um, or, or they created their own footage which is not how they make Power Rangers they don't make their own footage of Power Rangers generally so uh, yeah Injustice I think would be a great opportunity to explore Lord Draken more. Finally my number one pick for Injustice 3 DLC is Neo from The Matrix. I think The Matrix trilogy is a fantastic group of movies it's my favourite movie franchise. I love the world, I love the inventiveness of it, I love the sci-fi setting um, even the bits where they go off the rails and they start going into all these kind of uh, preachy kind of nature of it. I don't I don't mind that so much and I feel a lot of uh, the Matrix um, 2 and 3's rejection by fans is because it asked so much of their audience to sort of keep up with the pace of what they were trying to tell while also demanding that you read the comics, that you watch the Animatrix animated shorts, that you play the video game just to get all the lore and I think that was a mistake. Uh, as, as inventive as that was as, and as impressive as it was for, to, to sort of experience media in that way it was a bit too much for an original franchise and maybe something they should have done after the fact but Matrix would be Matrix if it didn't do things differently. The reason I think Neo would be good good in Injustice is not just because he's a cool character, not because he could use all his Matrix abilities in the world, not because he would have awesome combos and his Kung Fu would work really well and he would look badass, but he's Warner Brothers. You know? It, 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 it's almost like a foregone conclusion. Matrix, they're going to do some new Matrix movies soon. Um, Warner Brothers, who make Injustice, who own NeverRealm Studios and and all the properties to do with that, and the DC, you know, the DC Comics expanded universe, they they own the rights to do the games for that. It just makes sense that they would put Neo from the Matrix, which is another property they own, into Injustice Three. I was again a bit shocked they didn't do it with Injustice Two, um, but now it seems like one of the only characters left, which just seemed like such an easy layup to put a character like Neo into the game. And with Keanu Reeves doing so many different sort of um, appearances and pop culture references and, and you know what he's done with uh, Cyberpunk in their advertising campaign, I don't think it would be too difficult to reprise his role as Neo in, uh, in a video game like Injustice and do record of his lines, do his likeness, um, why not? And, and you know all of the trademark moves that it would do for the movies would definitely be in the game uh, the reality bending of it all I just think it would be awesome um, so yeah I think it would be a good introduction back to the character back into pop culture um, so when they do start doing promotion for the movies it would be great for the game great for the franchise just to sort of put Neo back in there and remind everybody why we all thought that the one was a cool character to begin with so that's it, that's my six characters that I'd like to see as DLC guest characters 
for Injustice 3. And I hope to see you guys online, uh, maybe I'll play a few games with you sometime. If you've got some picks of what you think would be a good character for Injustice uh, 3, drop them in the comments. I'd love to have a conversation about them and see what you pick and see if there's something I haven't thought of. Even if you didn't like my picks, uh, let me know. I'd love to talk to you about it, you know. I, I, one of the best things about all this is that we can have a conversation about what is a good choice and what is a bad choice. I love it. I think it's great. That's all for me, Bill from Pop Culture Poor Screen, signing off, and I'll see you next video. Laters!